Hey, welcome back to Sam Can Do, the channel where I have survived my first month of motherhood. And believe me, I'm using the word survived because it has been a doozy. I want to first say thank you so much to all of you who watched my birth video as well as my postpartum story. I am so 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 grateful um for the words for the encouragement and i want to let you know that i am okay i'm doing well i am stable mentally <laughs> emotionally um and i am i am i'm not in the depths of despair um so thank you so much and i just want y'all to not worry about me because as you saw in the postpartum video i did receive help and i do have people monitoring me um, I'm also still on Zoloft. I'm weaning off, so that's really good. Um, and I've missed doses, which is really bad, but I have been okay. So you don't have to worry, but I do, I mean, I do appreciate you guys reaching out. I think it's important that just because someone's posting something, you don't assume that they're okay because you put out a front sometimes. So feel free to reach out when you think I'm cray cray. Um, so I just want to let you know, like it has been a crazy and amazing month, but I feel like I'm finally getting into a little bit of a rhythm. Um, I don't think I've necessarily figured it out by any means. Um, but I'm really excited and I wanted to share, um, kind of just some cool things that have happened. Um, also to have decided that with my channel i really want to be very honest about my views and my life i think i was afraid that if i was too you know christian or too honest or too this or too that that i wouldn't appeal to the masses um but you know what like i watch people that i don't agree with i watch people that i don't have the same religion as i watch people that believe different things and so i never want to hide myself to try to impress you because i feel like that's a way of being fake um so i'm going to share some things about my faith and things like that um but yeah so it's been amazing and lucy is starting to already show a little bit of her personality she's starting to laugh <laughs> <laughs> you know in the beginning it's just like the crying and the and it's and it is hard and she's been a little colicky but um you know now that she's kind of responding and kind of giggling it's been really awesome and I definitely want to put some clips in here of her and kind of some of the fun things that have happened um and it's interesting what you think is happening and then what's developmentally possible like I don't think it's developmentally possible but it, I am kind of convinced that either she's a genius or it's happening but it seems like Lucy was like mimicking my sister and then mimicking me she did it again later and I got it on video one time where we were going ooh and then she would respond, oh. oh. <laughs> and like, she did it five times and then she did it again, but like she only makes a certain amount of noises. So maybe we just got lucky, but it's just so cool to see her grow and change. And it's crazy that she was born at seven pounds, 11 ounces. And now she is um, about at 10 pounds, um, you know, and it's, uh, it's just nuts. I mean, like this whole experience, like the birth and the everything it was nothing like I expected, but also just having her is nothing like I expected. I always thought that I'd be like a natural and it would be so easy for me. Yeah, it was difficult and confusing and no one can, you know, prepare you for that. Um, some other things that have happened so i think i mentioned that she's not breastfeeding she still will not breastfeed she refuses to put a boob in her mouth um which at first really hurt my feelings it's so silly how like a baby can reject your breast and you're like i'm not enough and, and like really like go through these feelings of like thinking that you're not you're not enough but something really cool happened so what i do is i pump literally every two to three hours a day it's crazy r.i.p my nipples um and and that you know i have this time where i'm like stuck to a machine or whatever um except for when i use my willow pump if you would like a video about this space age crazy breast pump i'd love to talk about it it's kind of crazy um but i mostly use a regular pump at home so i'm just stuck and i'm thinking and i remember you know kind of sitting there and asking god like why because i i pray and i ask god questions because i believe that we can 
respond back. I don't think it's a one-way street. I think it's back and forth and I've, um, I believe that I've heard, you know, not heard audibly, but heard the voice of God and guiding and, you know, a lot of different things. I've been, I think the Bible says like, or I know the Bible says like the sheep know his voice. Um, so sometimes I just ask him questions, you know, I seek him. It says if we seek, we'll find. So I seek the hell. I seek the heaven out of God. But you know, cause Lucy in the beginning, like when she breastfed, she couldn't get any milk cause her mouth is so small and my nipple is so big. But uh, anyway, uh, you know, and so now when she tries to take the breast, I, I don't know, I think it's like a fear thing. Like she thinks that she's gonna starve because it's not that she can't take, she can transfer milk. Like she's done it for a couple seconds and then she's gulping cause I hear and see the milk coming out and, and go, going in her, her mouth is a little bit bigger. But as soon as the breast touch her mouth, she gets mad. And that doesn't happen with the pacifier, it doesn't happen with, you know, a bottle. As soon as she gets a bottle, she drinks and she goes after it. And I've even got different bottles. So I was praying and I was kind of like, Lord, you know, what is it with this breast? And I felt like the Lord was telling me, you know, Sam, it's kind of like you. And I was like, what do you mean it's like me? You know, I said, why doesn't she come to the source? And it's like, we have the opportunity to seek God. We have the opportunity to get what we need directly from the source, but we don't always know that we do because in our life and trauma, you know, we think that we're alone, you know, before we know God or before, you know, you feel like you're alone, but God allows us to find comfort in other things, in people, um, in um, dissociation, healthy dissociation to deal with trauma or, you know, God shows us our love through, a, you know, a person or a, a, some something that gives us the feeling of security um and but the point of those things are always to lead us back to god but even when we know to go back to god and we realize that we have an opportunity source those other things are easier and they're more comfortable and i felt like god was saying like lucy's comfortable with the bottle because she's used to it it feels safe to her whereas directly from the source was scary because she views that time as if she was going to starve when in reality I'm her mom and I love her and I was going to make sure that she wasn't going to starve no matter what. I was going to make sure she got what she needed. And in the same way, God wasn't going to leave us alone, even though we viewed that situation as him abandoning us. And I was like, oh my God, she's just afraid to go back to the source. And so I was like, God, I thank you for that revelation. And I was like, God, I, I repent for not coming directly to the source to get what I need. And so in that way, I was able to just start praying for Lucy in that way. Just pray that she wouldn't have fear because though she can't comprehend it, it's like I, as her mom, can kind of grasp the concept of fear and, and, and for her just walk. And you know, her name is Lucy Brave. So I intend to teach her bravery. And so it's cool though, because I have this deeper sense of empathy for her process. Um, and so it became not about me. So when my breast is in her mouth and she's like, Ugh, I don't think... I'm not enough, blah, blah, I'm like, this is her process. And so when I let that go, then it's not me pressuring her, like, I need you to, to breastfeed so that I'm okay. Because we do that. We do that to our children. We do that to our husbands. We do, you know, we want them to do something to make us feel okay. And that's really wrong, especially when they're in a place of need. And so I feel like there's this freedom to say, like, I don't need you to breastfeed for me. I want you to breastfeed so that you have the best of what you need. And so we've just been trying every day. And in the middle of the night last night, for like a solid three minutes, she fed off the breast. I woke up, Hayden, he got scared. He thought something was wrong. I was like, Hayden, hurry, come here. And so it was just this little moment where she was drinking. And I was like, Lucy, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. You're doing such a great job. And I'm just believing that every memory, every time we engage you know her a memory of where she is able to eat at the breast it's just going to give an opportunity for her to have that experience and change the way that she sees things you know the same thing with us you know we view life through our trauma we think oh well this is a time where someone wasn't there for me and so then you have like a wasn't there for me pair of glasses in which you see the whole world and i think all of us have to learn to see the places where people are there for me and take off those glasses and not allow our belief systems to stop us from growing and you know that's really hard um, and I think God wants that for all of us to you know to grow so it's it's like little lessons that she's teaching me also you know I'm trying to I did something on my Instagram live about like um, just enjoying the moments because it's so easy to be like oh I can't wait till she talks I can't wait till she walks I can't wait till she laughs I can't wait till this and not appreciate that she's just a little nugget like that's that like holding and someone like tagged me in a video about like 
you know, this is the only time that she'll be able to, you know, be able to hold her. I mean, when she was in my tummy, that was the only time she was gonna be in my tummy. And so I'm trying to appreciate every little moment that I have with her. Um, yeah, so it's been cool to learn kind of those lessons. Another interesting thing is that I found a new place in my heart to be loved. I have a new, I have a new love language. I both love and hate love languages. Someone illuminated the problem of love languages for me and that it's a blessing to know someone's love language. If you're not familiar with that, Google it. It's like saying, I receive love through words or gifts or service or blah, blah, blah. And I think it's a great way for you to find someone else's love language and to better serve them and love them. But a lot of times people just use it as a way to judge the way that someone else loves them and to reject them by saying, oh, I don't receive love that way. So you gave me a gift, but I don't receive love that way. I receive love through words instead of saying like, thanks. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I, I like it, but I don't like it. Anyway, I have like a new way in my heart that hasn't been there before that people can love me. And that is through loving my daughter by loving Lucy. It's so weird. Like, um, because I'm so responsible for Lucy, like I, I, I just, it feels like all of it's on me. So anytime that my, that Hayden, my husband, like love her, I feel love when he picks her up and when he takes care of her, he likes like woke up before me and was feeding her and I, I feel so loved. Not and for the sleep, cause that's, that's a gift. But also like my best friend Katie, like she'll just, adore Lucy and hold her and she'll be crying and I'm like oh do you want me to take her do you want me to take her and she doesn't she just is okay and she just adores her and she's not a huge like kids person and there's something about people just lavishing Lucy with love that makes me feel so like touched it makes me feel so touched in the way my mom and Hayden's mom and my dad and Hayden's dad are just like loving Lucy like it just makes me feel so absolutely touched and loved. So it's so cool to have this new part of my heart that it's like they do things for her and I just feel so like, oh, thank you so much. And it has, you know, it's not me. Um, so I'm interested to see how that grows and changes. Um, and that's been cool. And then also I am now able to leave the house and to get out. And I found that that is my biggest way that I've stayed sane. Like, have you had a baby did you when did you start leaving because I had to very quickly figure out how can I get this child mobile I've got to go get a cup of coffee I've got to go to church I've got to go here I've got to go there and it has literally saved my life I'm almost jumping too quickly I did a couple days that were a little bit um too much and Hayden kind of was like getting after me like you're doing too much and now you're exhausted and so I'm working on it but I mean I have to get out and one of my favorite things to do has been going to church um, cause it's so cute cause everyone loves her and she, I'll, I'll show you a video, but she has these little earphones and our church is really rowdy and charismatic and wonderful. Please come visit us. Launch Houston, Saturday nights at six o'clock. LaunchHouston.org, find the information there. But, um, like it's so funny to see her in her little headphones and while she's, and she usually sleeps through service. Um, there's been so, I even led worship singing for a prayer night on a Wednesday night and she just stayed in my little papoose and was part of it. It was awesome. Um, but I just want to share kind of my journey through figuring out all this stuff. Um, I also want to do a video about Harvey and Lucy and how Harvey's responded to her having her in the house. You know, boxers and babies is like one of the greatest things. Um, I would love to talk about Willow Pump. It's really, really crazy. People told me not to buy it and I did anyway and I'm really glad I did. Um, yeah, and I kind of want to do these little check-ins like how I survived these things. Um, but please comment down below like what? So I have now a six week old baby. Like what do I do now? Like tell me your best stories or tell me what I need to prepare for because people say that you get used to it and then all of a sudden everything changes. Um, yeah. Gosh, crazy time. Also, I just finished Redeeming Love, and that book is really, really good. Um, yeah, you guys, it's crazy. I, I've never loved someone so much and wanted them just to sleep for a very long time. The baby monitor is my version of the worst horror story ever. Oh, and by the way, my vagina is doing fine, just in case you were wondering. Have a great night. This is the same can do. Remember, take care of yourself. You're a whole person. Take care of your body. Take care of your soul. Take care of your spirit, your emotions. Like, don't just focus on one. I hope that you're all awesome. Please subscribe to my channel. 
um, and like this video. Even if you don't like it, like what's gonna hurt? Just like this video, like this video, comment down below, share your stories so that I can, I, I, I respond to every single comment that's down below. Um, yeah, and follow me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is Sam Can Do. And that's it. Good night.